Good morning. Welcome to Winnipeg. Now, it is just getting light outside and I notice the sun is just peeking up over the berm right now. Looks like we might have another nice sunrise. I haven't actually been watching it as it's been progressing, so I don't know what it's been doing up until right now. But maybe we'll see it at the end of today's episode again. Some people like them, some people don't. One nice thing about YouTube videos, you don't have to watch them. Okay, so what do we got going on here? All right, I have ordered the paint. They should have just received the order early this morning, all being well, and hopefully the store in Toronto is picking all the little jars that I want and putting them in a box, and they're going to be coming by Canada Post. Generally speaking, uh, mail between Winnipeg and, Ca and uh, Toronto is, is good. It's, it's usually really good. So I'm guessing, well, what do we got here? Today is uh, Thursday. I'm guessing maybe Sunday. It might be here. Maybe sooner. Uh, that, that is, as long as the uh, place I ordered them from, uh, you know, picks them and, and mails them right away. Uh, I've had good service with them before. I, I, I think the last time I ordered something from them would be about four years ago uh, when I got the uh, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, uh, which I don't use because it's, it's uh, got a very strong odor, but it's, it, it, is, it is really good stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, the service, if I remember right, it, I think I had a problem, but then it got sorted. So, uh, yeah, so most of what I've got, in case you can't read that, is, is the uh, Mr. Hobby a Curious or something like that. I don't know, I probably didn't say that right. And uh, then the, what they didn't have in that particular brand, I got the next closest thing. Now, a couple of, the, a couple of them I already had. For instance, one of the ones that they were out of was the one that is that also called the call out says uh, Tamiya XF19 of which I have three bottles over there two of them have been opened and used but one is brand new so hey I didn't need to get that another one that they didn't have was a particular red and I happen to have the red you, you can see it away over there uh, so yeah uh, you know I think we're going to have all the all the colors that uh, Trumpeter is calling for all being well uh, and and if it's not quite right well hey tough all right <clears throat> now I got uh, I got two pieces of <clears throat> good news yesterday and uh, first one was from a viewer who said that uh, he had uh, two two uh, bikes that have the uh, DCT the, the double clutch transmission and he's had and he's been using it for 13 years and the first thing I thought of when I read the comment was well has it been out that long and I know I had read once from somewhere else that that this particular transmission Honda has been using it for a long time but I thought 13 years well it turns out yeah Honda started using it about 13 14 years ago and uh uh so uh, I, I would think that by now they've got the bugs sorted out and everybody that uh, all all the reviews that I've seen on it, they seem people seem to really like it. The only thing that anybody's ever had to say against it is people who actually like to shift manually. <clears throat> like I've got a neighbor who's got a, a car that's a standard, and he likes to shift manually. He doesn't want an automatic, and uh, I I can see that. You know, just just what you like. Uh, it's uh, shifting yourself is kind of more sporty. I'll admit that. Uh, or in the case of a motorcycle, it's this. Uh, <laughs> however, uh, yeah, so now that, that was the first piece of good news. One, one of the viewers. And, and if you happen to be watching, thanks for the comment. I appreciate that. It made me feel really good. Now, second, second piece of good news was I uh, got a, uh, an email from uh, Anna at Bill Cycle. And... Uh, and uh, and, and she said that the Honda Rebel that, that I am getting is, well, first of all, I misread the, 
the coding. Like I, she sent, she had originally sent me a, a a copy of what Honda Canada had had sent to them, or Honda somebody, and uh, so I, I misread that. I thought that it was a 2023, where in fact she says no, it's a 2024, and then she sp explained what the different codings meant. Uh, that that it is. I was concerned that possibly because it didn't say it had a DCT, uh, that maybe it didn't. And she says, no, it does. So this is all really good news. Uh, and thank you, Anna, for another update on that and, and setting me straight on that. I really appreciate getting these comments. Uh, you, you and JR out there are doing a great job uh, so far. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, that's two pieces of good motorcycle related news. Now, what I want to do today is being as I can't really do any painting because I don't think that these things actually call for uh, the paints that I've already got. You know, the, the 19 uh, and the uh, gray and the uh, red. Uh, I think there's, I thought there was one other that I had too, but maybe not. Anyway, uh, uh, it, it was kind of interesting. Some of them I actu actually had a real hard time trying to get something similar to <clears throat> that the, the, Mr. Hobby just didn't have it. Now you got to remember when 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 this kit was put out, uh, I'm I, I didn't look up the date. Trumpeter usually has a will will date them, and I I know I could find out, but I'm guessing it's about eight years ago when it first came out. Maybe not that long ago. And and I I, I remember I had started watching different people build it uh, on the internet. Uh, a little over five five years ago, when uh, I was trying to decide, do I want to, you know, set up a hobby table and, and do this this thing? And uh, I, I know I've said this before that that this kit, it was it was available here in Winnipeg at the at the time, but I had it in my head I wanted to do the Bismarck. And so I, I waited, if you remember, it took about a month before the Bismarck finally came in. But we got it, and I got what I wanted. <laughs> uh, and we had a lot of fun making that Bismarck kit. You know, somebody asked me, which one of the four do I like the best? And, uh, and, and you know, like, which one do they find the easiest to build? Which one do I like the looks of the best? And so on. And I have to say that the Bismarck on all accounts. Now I think possibly it was because it was my first big uh, one 200 scale ship and I was a little bit more interested in it uh, as as the builds progressed and I, I, I moved uh, you know then to the Hood and then to the Rodney and then finally the Iowa as I went through all those I think my interest you might say was waning uh, not that I wasn't having a good time. It just I just didn't have the uh, the enthusiasm that I had for the Bismarck build, and I like the looks of the Bismarck the best. I I, I don't know why it, it just appeals to me the best. Uh, yeah, even though they were the other guys, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, you got to admit they had a pretty nice ship. Uh, okay, so what are we going to do here today? I think what I'm going to do is I was noticing on these torpedoes, especially some of them, may, it might be a little bit hard to see there, but if I get the light to reflect, you'll notice that the seam is, is pretty predominant. Uh, and so what I want to do is I want to try and, and just scrape that flat as best I can without making it flat-sided and just try and get rid of it, even though I do believe that most of these are going to be hidden inside torpedo tubes and so on. I, I think if I remember right, there is uh, three or four of them sitting on some sort of a rack that you could actually see them. But uh, and, and then you have the option, I believe, to have one coming down through the, through the upper deck and be, as though it was being put into the, into the ship, if the ship was at, in port, obviously. And uh, yeah, so uh, otherwise we, we, we aren't really going to see too much of these, but I can have the fun of trying to make them nice anyway. And uh, I have to, there's not a whole lot I can do until the paint comes anyway. Um, I guess, uh, well, I could clean these parts up, but I don't want to glue them together until, uh, until I get them painted their various colors. Oh, and uh, 
those of you who are watching this build and, and suggesting and saying, hey, uh, this, this is the same color brown as this or, you know, that kind of stuff. I really do appreciate those, those comments. I know, I know I'm getting comments from people that have already done this build who are t 100 times more experienced model makers than I am. Well, twice anyway. And I'm getting comments from you guys and you're making suggestions and I don't always reply uh, to express my appreciation the way I should. But I, I really do appreciate them. I read every single comment, even though I might just give it a thumbs up. You know, I I, I do read your comments. Um, yeah, so I, I know we've we've uh, I beat that to death too, didn't I? Okay, uh, let's uh, let's recompose here. I don't think there's anything else that uh, I wanted to update you on, and uh, just for the fun of it. Uh, we'll get the camera down here on, on the table and we'll get in nice and close and we'll see if we can't scrape one of those seams flat. Well, rounded flat, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Now, I always sort of cringe when I'm showing something close up like this, even though I'm not using the macro lens, because you can readily see, you know, where I've done a poor job and where I haven't. And if you look in, in here, in the uh, where the propellers are, yeah, you can see that maybe my job of gluing them up and trimming the blades and stuff like that just isn't all that great. But at a distance, they actually look pretty good. Now we're going to try and have this at an angle so that the the light will catch it, and we should be able to see that, that seam right there. And I don't think I have ever used Chris's file on something like this before. If it doesn't work out, this will be one of the torpedoes that goes in a torpedo tube and we don't see any part of it. But normally I would take uh, my my hobby knife, which is where? Okay, it's right here. And normally what I would do is I'd, I would take and I would use it as a scraper and just sort of scrape along. But I don't want to do that right now. I want to see how how will this file work because the the uh, the cutting edge, the cutters or the... Uh, yeah, the file part of it is is very is very sharp, and okay. Um, I think that in all likelihood, it it's meant to go like this, not like this. That's the way these are designed. So uh, I think I'm gonna go and go to my tried and true way of doing it here. Let's just see what's going to happen. I just want to sort of try and take it down so that with this high side, which is the half that's away from you, it gets down to the low side. And I'm getting pretty close to that right now. There we go. That, that, that's about it right there. Yeah, you can, you can see that they it's basically becoming one. Cause right here that's not too good. All right, let's get the, uh, the end here if we can. That's pretty close. All right, now for, for right here. Oh, let's not break that. Oh, look at what I did. Look at what I've done now. Well, uh, we'll, we'll go this way. Isn't that too bad? But I think I can fix that. In fact, I know I can, as long as I don't break it right off. Right now, it's being held. It's being held in the in the right shape, more or less. OK, 
Okay, let's uh, take our medium sanding stick now and just try and round that off. And be careful not to catch that. I think in, uh, on the on the real torpedo that that would spin around and and set the uh, the detonator. I think that's what that was all about. In other words, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't accidentally go off when it was in the submarine. break that part any worse than it already is yeah. and just on the end here okay now the the fine We did take off a fair amount of plastic. Don't want to press down too hard on this and split it apart. Have to remember to check my email and see if uh, the hobby store in Toronto has uh, has shipped the. Uh, the package yet. I'm hoping they'll give me a tracking number like Amazon does. That's kind of fun. Okay, I, I think that I think we did it a little bit better. I, I mean, I think it looks a little bit better. Now let's see if I can't. What am I going to do here now? I think I'll just moisten it with some extra thin. Where is it here? Just sort of pry it back here. Okay, how's that look? I have to turn. Sorry, I have to turn it at the wrong angle for you, but I have to look straight down on it. Okay, I think we pretty much got it there. Now, now when that melts, I think it's going to be. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be all right. I know, I know it, it might appear to look a little bit crooked, but maybe if I put it straight on to you, I think it's, it's actually supposed to be that way to give the uh, impression of uh, being like a propeller, only in reverse. Okay, now I'm going to do this, this other seam on the top here off camera. Yeah. Well, I think it's better. Yeah, I, I think it's better. Now I just have to do that 11 more times. Okay, this is actually my second take on this. You know, I say I don't re do retakes, but I do when it's something important like this. I had originally opened this letter uh, on camera, and then when I got down to the back of it, it said, please don't identify me except for my first name. Well, it's somebody by the name of Peter in Australia. And what Peter had done was he saw uh, where I had gone to HobbySense online, 
and he noticed that there were some kits there uh, by Wingnut Wings, uh, and he was having difficulty getting a particular kit. Turns out uh, he went on Hobby Sense's uh, website and and saw them and uh, ordered them, and they're on their way to Australia. Uh, apparently, it's a particular kit that he really wanted really bad and was having difficulty finding anywhere. So uh, <laughs> that sort of makes me feel good that, you know, uh, the fact that I wore my chest cam and walked around in there and uh, and he saw the kits he wanted and it's, <laughs> yeah, and they're on their way to Australia, the complete other side of the world. Now, isn't that something? Anyway, thank you, Peter, for this letter. Thank you very much. Okay, I've got all our parts cleaned up and I've got the seams on the torpedoes basically scraped off. Not perfect, but... Uh, the, from arm's length, they're going to look okay. Now, uh, there's nothing more I can do here with with steps one or two. Well, one is the torpedoes. And uh, step two, I've got all the pieces ready to be glued together, but of course I wanted to wait and paint them first. Uh, oh, one thing I did want to mention, that uh, one of the substitutes that I had to make that might turn out to be interesting, although I think it's going to be the same thing, is that when I went to order the uh, extra thin, uh, they were sold out of extra thin. I guess it's very popular. And uh, so I substituted with uh, uh, AK extra thin. So it'll be interesting to see... You know, if I notice any difference. They, they did have the uh, quick setting, though, so I got a, uh, a, uh, a, a quick setting here. Um, anyway, uh, still haven't uh, received an email from uh, the hobby store in, in Toronto uh, saying that they shipped it yet. Now, mind you, it is only, I guess it would be 320 in Toronto, so uh, I'm, I'm hoping to get an email this evening saying that, that it shipped. Um, yeah. Now, uh, what I noticed uh, something different here, or something interesting, and that is that uh, this larger piece goes right here, and this smaller piece goes right here. And I was noticing that the uh, trumpeter has keyed them, so you can't put them on upside down. I'll put the macro lens on here, and we'll uh, move in and have a nice close look. We've got to use the macro lens at least once in every episode, right? Okay, obviously this is the larger one. And uh, if we turn it up like this, you can see that there's a little notch there that has to go down in there. And it won't fit if we try it any other way. A lot of little detail here that we're going to probably try and put something on it. I do believe that there is decals that have to go on this as well. Uh, okay, let's move down to the smaller one now. And... This is it here. I think I've got everything still in focus, I hope. Oh, come on, I can't turn it over. There we go. Yeah, you can see that, that obviously this part here is supposed to go, let's turn it this way. There we go. Whoops. Yeah, like that. So if we have it lined up just right, it should it should go on now. Why is this so complicated? Have I got it the wrong way? No, that's the right way. It is not fitting. It is not fitting. Have I got it wrong? No, it's not wrong. Oh, there, there we go. I, yeah, yeah, it's locked in place now. Okay, I think once we get some extra thin on there, and, and uh, you know, it'll it'll meld in place. But also, this this piece here, I want to paint before I stick it on. Otherwise, I'm probably going to, you know, touch. If I try to paint this afterwards, I'm going to get paint on here for sure. When my neighbor was over having coffee with me yesterday, we were talking about the weather. <laughs> what else to talk about, right? Everybody talks about the weather. And I was saying that if we didn't get any snow, 
uh, you know, it could be the bike path is going to dry up enough that I'll be able to get out. And wouldn't it be nice if I was able to get out even once in December? Well, I noticed today, even though it did snow last night, uh, one of my neighbors is out on his bike. Now, we saw him going by in the summertime. And uh, he, I wonder if he's going to try and go all winter as well. He's out there on the snow. I don't think I want to try that. Uh, yeah, you just hit a nicey spot and down you go. And at my age, I do not want to go down. Anyway, we'll see what happens here. We're supposed to be getting nice weather pretty soon. Well, good news. Just moments ago, I got an email from Sunward Hobbies in Toronto. The package is on its way. I got a tracking number. But it's too late to do any looking at that now. Uh, yeah, it's not very often I'm this late in the in the game. Uh, so I'm going to wind her up here. Thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.